So, um, you know, our, our belief is that um, we are part of a larger cosmos. Um, the name of that is Sa'anagai Bekehojo. Sa'anagai is male, Bekehojo is female. Sa'anagai is Father Sky, Bekehojo is Mother Earth. Very much like yin and yang uh, in that regard. But so it is a way, a life way that says that we are to live in harmony with everything around us. Uh, and everyone around us, everything around us, which include the non-human animals, includes also the insect world, the air, the earth, uh, the sky, all of it we are supposed to live in harmony with. And um, moreover, though, it is also the name of our creator. Sa'ana Mekai Hojo is the name of our creator, uh, which um, is the, the medicine men say that, that Sa'ana Mekai Hojo has a consciousness and they call it universal mind, and that we also are part of that because we were created by the creator, so we are part of that universal mind. And our consciousness is, is connected, we're, and we are interconnected. So that's kind of a big idea, which is shared by certain some other religions as well. Um, but if you take that particular structure or paradigm, you can see where, uh, your mind shifts in your, your ideas about other people. You don't see them as separate. You don't see them as different. You see them as part of yourself. You see them and you see the planet as part of yourself. And this is a big reason why indigenous communities are so adamant about protecting the earth and protecting our waters and, and, and our animals is because we're not separate from them. We are all connected. So if you think of things in that way, uh, guess what? A lot of stuff starts getting healed. Uh, in particular, mental disorders can be healed because when you come back into ceremony, you're reminded of that non-separateness and you're reminded of the fact that because we are all connected, we can lend ourselves to um, healing the minds of those people. Uh, Navajo ceremonies are a lot about mind purification um, and sort of restoring harmony and balance in the mind. And so you can imagine that a lot of mental states, and I'm not talking about severe mental illness by any means, but a lot of anxiety and depression are, are actually caused by a, a strong sense of ego and a strong sense of self. But when you let go of that sense of yourself and you shift your mind from worrying so much about you as an individual, you immediately become freer and less concerned about every little thing that's happening to you and more interested in what's happening to us and you start to heal. So that, that's just one example from the ceremonies, but there's, there's just so many myriad, uh, there's a lot of emphasis on connection to the natural world and uh, um, you know, one of, one of the, well, I'll share a story about that later maybe, but... Um, now, why don't you share the story? Okay. <laughs> so, this is from the Yebiche, which is um, a winter ceremony call, also called the Night Chant. It's uh, nine days long, and uh, inside of that ceremony, which was translated actually by uh, Washington Matthews for the University of Utah, and just as an aside, Washington Matthews translator was my grandmother's grandfather, Jesus Arviso, who, <laughs> tiny story inside the story, uh, he was not Navajo, he was um, Spanish, and he had blue eyes and blonde hair, oh, I'm sorry, blue eyes and fair skin and dark hair. In the 1800s, he was living as a child in um, northern Mexico and was captured by the Apaches and sold to the Navajos, and he became uh, a, basically a Navajo servant or you know, a prisoner of war. Um, but as he grew up, he learned Navajo so he could speak Navajo and Spanish, and he became both the interpreter for the Navajo tribe to, for their treaty with the United States of America, but also an interpreter for Washington Matthews for this particular um, ceremony. So in the ceremony, uh, there's a story where uh, a boy has a dream, and in that dream, uh, rams with blue faces come to him, and they tell him, that the men of the tribe are hunting more game than they, than they need. 
and that it is throwing the universe off balance. And that if they continue to do this, the Ram said that the holy people will make the game scarce and there will be a famine and starvation. And uh, so the boy woke up from his dream um, and he went to the hunters and he told them about the, the prophecy of the rams and they laughed at him and said, go back to your dreaming and let us do the hunting. And then the famine came and the starvation and the game were very scarce. And then they remembered this, this dream, this young boy, this story, and they resolved that they would never take more game than they needed from there on out. But not only that, they also said that they would never take more of, of anything than they needed, which gives rise to what we call subsistence culture, which is a means of drawing lightly on the earth and not over hunting, over fishing, over exploiting our planet. And um, it continues uh, to this day. That's our way of being, which I think could also heal the planet if you follow my drift. Could I, Ross, yeah, could yeah. I pick up on that real quick? Yeah. Because, um, and, and also early, this was amazing, Lori. Thank you for sharing all of that. Um, and I profoundly- I had pictures too, but I we couldn't <laughs> quite get that together. Anyway. I, I profoundly resonate with so much of what you said. And there, at one point you were talking about dissolving the bloated egos mm -hmm. that, that often mm -hmm. lead to the pain and the, the yeah. suffering yes. that we experience and that we end up sharing with one another um, uh, too generously. And, you know, I was, um, I, I had some revelation on this and some teaching on this and on it from an unexpected place when I was talking to an Old Testament scholar and I said, how, how do I, because I feel that very strongly, and, and there's a lot in science that actually points to that, our interdependence with other beings. I mean, just think about, we are an ecology. Your single body is an ecology. There is fungus and bacteria and viruses living in your gut and in other places of your body. True. And it's not just that they're there, <laughs> but, <laughs> but they are dependent on one another. Right, this true symbiosis going on. It's a beautiful thing, we barely understand it. Um, and it's a, it's a remarkable area of study. Uh, but it's so inspiring every time I think about it, this sort of ecological body that we are. And at times it makes me think about the body of Christ and some analogies there. But I've actually wrestled to say, well, you, you know, growing up when I wasn't Christian and I used to hear radio programs and such, people saying, well, the Genesis says that we have dominion. And so we can do whatever we want, right? Because we've got this sort of special place. Um, and so I went to an Old Testament scholar and I said, can you help me like reconcile these things? Because I, I, I don't know how to think through this. And he said, where did you hear that? <laughs> because that is not at all how you know, a, um, a Jewish reader of Genesis would have understood uh, that, that terminology. And he took me through a wild ride of understanding uh, a lot of what was in there. So for example, Rada, uh, which is often translated in English in dominion, and unfortunately had, dominion is a, is a word in English that comes, it's loaded and comes with all kinds of cultural expectations about what it might mean. But in ancient Jewish tradition, uh, Rada really meant like regal rule or kingly rule. And the ethical ideal of a king was service, was to lay down your life for the benefit of your subjects. There was nothing about kingship that lauded over anybody. It was just laying down of your life. And then you see that thread connect to the cross, right? Where the ideal is realized in that moment, right? This laying down of oneself solely for the benefit of others and not anybody else. And suddenly all kinds of dots started connecting for me, right? But I think that connects back to what Lori was saying about how um, that, that the, the laying down of oneself, right, and one's ego for the benefit of those that are around you is the starting point for healing. Mm -hmm.